and they break through and they get delivered or something, the devil's not going to attack them right then and there. He'll wait until the next day after they've slept a little bit and had a chance to maybe have the effects wear off and maybe don't feel the Holy Ghost so strongly now and, well, uh, maybe that happened, maybe it didn't. If a person come down and they accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, he won't attack them right then and there, but maybe tomorrow, uh, maybe you're saved, maybe you're not. Are you sure? That is, and he starts having us question faith. He has to start doubting. But faith is believing no matter what. It is pushing doubt aside. When we look at faith in the Word of God, in Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20, Matthew 17, 20, if someone will please read that. So what did Jesus like in faith unto? A grain of a mustard seed. When we look at a mustard seed, it is the smallest of the herb seeds. Where do we get that? We get that from the Word of God. In Mark chapter 4, verse 32. Jesus himself speaking. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs, and shooteth out great branches. Oh, let's go back to verse 31. It is like a grain of mustard seed. Where am I? Yes, I'm in the right verse. We'll get there again. It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. So it's the smallest of the seeds, according to Jesus. It's extremely small. But yet, that's what he compared faith to. He said it is the smallest of the herb seeds. However, what does he, Jesus say about the mustard seed when it grows? In Mark 4, 32, he claims it becomes the greatest of the herbs when it is sown. Mark 4.32 states, But when it is sown, it groweth up and become greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. So when we look at the mustard seed, that's what Jesus compared faith to. He said it's small, but when it's grown, the birds come and they find refuge under it, a shadow under it. If we look at a mustard seed, or any seeds, what do birds like to do to seeds? They like to eat them. They devour them. So when we look at that mustard seed, it starts off vulnerable. Extremely vulnerable. So vulnerable that it would be food for the birds. But when it matures, when it grows, it gets gets great branches. And the word of God says, the birds and fowls of the air find refuge under it. So it goes from being vulnerable to invulnerable. But it has to grow. The Bible states that every man is given a measure of faith. Every one of us in here have been given a measure of faith. So we have that mustard seed. But we have to allow it to grow. And while it's vulnerable at first, if we allow our faith to grow, those birds are the ones who would like to devour that seed. Who wants to devour our faith? The enemy wants to devour our faith. He wants to take it from us. But if we allow our faith to grow, the enemy can't do anything against it. Because we've allowed it 
to grow to the point that we're no longer doubting. It's not vulnerable. The faith that we have is not vulnerable. When is faith vulnerable? When we doubt. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So our faith can go from being something completely fragile to something that is unbreakable. I like what Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. When we look at Mark 11, 24, that is faith. Whatsoever you pray, believe that you have them. If we believe that we have something, will we doubt that we have it? Will we question if we have it? No, there's no room for it. Because we know without a shadow of doubt that we have it. And what did Jesus say? If you believe that you have them, ye shall have them. Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. There is no room in that verse for doubt. It is believe, and you have it. Now, I'm not preaching prosperity. Go out and lay your hands on a brand new Mustang or a convertible one. Claim it in the name of Jesus. That's not what I'm saying. But when it comes to faith, if you believe you have them, you have them. When you ask in prayer. See, the reason for that is the enemy of faith is doubting. When we doubt, we don't possess faith. We question it. That's not faith at all. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 19 and 20, someone please read that. Matthew 17, 19 and 20. Matthew 17, verses 19 and 20. So when we look at the disciples here, they're trying to cast out a demon. And they're asking Jesus, why can't we do it? Why can't we cast out this demon? And what was Jesus' answer to them? Because you doubt. They didn't have faith. They doubted that they could do it. They doubted that it was possible. And because of that, the demon was not cast out. And Jesus said the same is true if it comes to removing an owl. If you doubt, it won't happen. But if you have faith the size of what? A mustard seed. You can say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and it will be removed from you. But when we look at this verse, it seems like you have two options. You can either doubt and have nothing happen, as the disciples did with this demon. They can cast out why? Because of doubt. The opposite of faith. But, Jesus said, if you have faith, which is believing without doubting, it shall be done. And he didn't say it's faith the size when your mustard seed is in full bloom and blossom and has received all its strength and the bird is shadow, um, sitting in the shadow. He said, even in your most vulnerable, even when your faith is in its most vulnerable state, if you have that much faith, it'll be done. Doubt and faith are diabolically opposed to one another. If you doubt, you don't have faith. If you have faith, you will not doubt. Jesus said the same thing to the disciples in Luke chapter 17 and verse 6. And I'm getting ready to close here. Luke 17 and verse 6. If someone would please read that. Is 
Luke 17, 6. But the Lord said that he had the faith as a grain of mustard seed and might say unto the uh, tree, Do not pluck up by the root, and he shall be planted in the sea, and shall obey, show that he Jesus said if you have faith the size of what? A mustard seed. If you say unto this big tree that it should be plucked up by the roots, it will be done. Faith in its most vulnerable state. That's all you need is faith in the most vulnerable state. It doesn't have to be great faith. It doesn't have to be tremendous faith. Faith in the most vulnerable state can move mountains, can have sick more trees plucked up. It can see great things done for God. But if we doubt, it is not faith. Faith is not doubt. Faith is not worrying. Faith is not questioning. Faith is simply believing that Jesus said it, and it will be done. Faith is believing no matter what the situation looks like. If we have thoughts of doubt that come in, we need to push them aside. If Jesus said it, it will be done. What did he say in Mark 11, 24? Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever ye desire, when ye play, pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Jesus said to pray as if you presently already have the answer. Not doubting, but knowing that it's already on its way. Any thoughts, any questions at this point? If not, we're going to close in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and will continue to do. Lord, we thank you that you God who reigns with high that there's not none like you. Even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property, above and below, and no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds would be one mindset, one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, and that the Holy Ghost may have his way and move as it so desires. I pray, Lord, that you anoint the song leader and the musicians. Give them a special blessing as they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords, Lord. As they lead us in the songs you have us to sing, anoint the pastor our smile in his lips as he brings forth the words you have us to hear. And anoint our minds and our hearts that they would be plowed, that they be good soil, Lord, for your word to fall on. That we may take it with us throughout the day, but, Lord, that it, we would remember throughout the week. But even greater than that, that we would apply it to our lives and be even more transformed into the very image of Jesus Christ. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus.